Hello and welcome to Study IQ, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you are learning good. Today is 8th July 2020. I would like to start today's discussion with this quote by Dalai Lama. Where ignorance is our master, there is no possibility of real peace. First of all, let me tell you that real peace is one of the most important thing. It's like a fertile ground for for a crop or for a tree. Uh, to expand for a, a seed to uh, you know metamorphosize into a tree it requires a fertile ground in the same way if an individual a society or a nation if it wants to witness growth and development then real peace is just like a fertile ground right it is one of the most important thing and when a country an individual or a society when it is uh, Uh, filled up with uh, ignorance when ignorance is the master of that individual society or country then there is no possibility of real peace and if there is no real peace there is no prosperity there is no growth there is no development think about it with this dear friends study iq team has designed a smart course uh, this smart course is for civil services examination it covers a pre and mains examination and to find out more about it check out our mobile application till 10th july 2020 emi offer is also available so make the most out of this offer to download the pdf of today's discussion check out my telegram channel you can follow me on facebook uh, please make sure that you share this lecture with other students hit the like button if you have learned something from today's discussion and please don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel if you have already subscribed then hit the notification bell as well and if you have not subscribed uh, do it now hit the notification bell so that uh, you will get notifications uh, about all the videos awesome videos that are created by study iq team today on our table we have five interesting articles uh, one common thing with all these articles uh, is uh, geopolitics right uh, most of means all of them they are not purely geopolitical articles Th- there are so many other things as well but uh, overall they are associated with international relations or uh, geopolitics uh, so, so first one is from the hindu more cyber rattling more isolation second one is uh, india must stand up for uh, tibet very interesting article from hindustan times uh, ethiopia's bloody mayhem this one is from the hindu then we have one more from the hindu and this one is in stand off keeping an eye on the nuclear ball and the last one is Uh, associated with uh, kuwait and india and this one is from indian express uh, it's called end of a dream and then i have some news items for you guys so let's uh, start with the more cyber rattling more isolation from the hindu now uh, remember a few days ago we were talking about uh, italian marines and uh, at that point of time i told you to do a little bit of research on exclusive economic zones and other things now those students who have done uh, research about these things about nautical miles and exclusive economic zones and other things then uh, it would be very easy for you guys to understand this whole uh, topic uh, it's about south china sea it's about uh, china's nine dash line now china has claimed uh, if you if you see the map on your screen this picture on your screen then you can see this red lines right uh, there are total nine lines uh, so let's start with 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 this whole portion here basically this whole region is claimed by china china is saying that uh, this whole portion be- uh, belongs to china and if you go back in the history of china then there was a king he used to rule this whole portion so this whole region belongs to china that's what china has been saying for a very long period of time and china has breached uh, territorial claims so china has breached uh, exclusive economic zones of other nations philippines uh, Uh, was not happy with this and in fact even today it is not happy with uh, china's this behavior so how it works is under on close you can have a direct discussion so a and b let's say here we will say p and c so uh, philippines was not happy with this claim so it had a word with china uh, things were not uh, moving in right direction so finally you have this option that you can invoke you can ask for a dispute settlement mechanism 
it's like uh, you know filing a case in a court something like that so this dispute settlement mechanism was invoked by philippines uh, this works under this un clause and have you know the full form of un clause isn't it a few days ago we were talking about this thing if you don't know then i want you guys to google it right if you, if this is your first day then as well you should google these things Uh, because if i repeat all these things then we'll not have time to discuss new stuff and if you want to know more about unclose and other things then check out my previous videos uh, go through my telegram channel download some pdf files and uh, uh, you know find this india italy uh, this issue of uh, uh, this marines and uh, we have talked about it uh, last saturday and i think uh, monday as well uh, we have talked about it so last saturday and monday go through this two videos and you will find so many things about this and close on other things okay so on 12th july 2016 uh, four years ago permanent court of arbitration pca at the hague decreed in its judgment that the line this 9 dash line had no legal basis pca rejected china's claim Uh, PCA has said that uh, China has violated exclusive economic zone of Philippines. China has, uh, you know, reclaimed land over here. China is doing illegal construction uh, in the South China Sea. Uh, it is uh, harming the environment and it is also destroying the whole ecosystem in this region. So, what do you think, uh, uh, China? Uh, it means how China reacted to this uh, decision or this judgment by PCA? China. dismissed the judgment china said uh, china termed it as null and void china said that you are using politics in the name of law you are using politics and you are trying to snatch away china's rights and china is behaving very aggressively in this region in this south china sea it has increased uh, its uh, patrolling it is using live fire live fire means real bullets and real bombs and real things you know it is using real weapons was doing exercise military exercise in south china sea it is uh, you know creating troubles for uh, uh, claimant countries it is uh, ramming and uh, sinking uh, uh, fishing vessels of uh, these countries and uh, china is also renaming so many important uh, islands and important atolls uh, of this uh, region of south china sea it is building runways uh, big pardon it is building runways bunkers and it is also preparing you know china has created uh, so much military infrastructure here that uh, god forbid but if there is any sort of war here then china will last uh, quite longer here and it is also exploring uh, minerals and uh, hydrocarbons and it is using its uh, drilling vessels in this region now uh, i'm sure many of you are uh, are are quite curious about south china sea that why south china sea is so important pay attention on your screen you can see this region south china sea here is this portion is indian ocean isn't it this whole water is indian ocean water and here this is pacific ocean here so this south china sea is like a very important uh, Uh, trade uh, transit point and it's not uh, from last few years since uh, medieval times this south china sea has played a very this is the reason why you find uh, macau this is the reason why you find uh, hong kong uh, singapore all these uh, important ports uh, or port cities are here because of the importance of south china sea and this indicates that uh, this has been this place has been a transit point for trade since early medieval times so it connects indian ocean with pacific ocean so it is important for indo pacific uh, strategy right so there are four five uh, main things uh, so first thing is trade connectivity uh, second is uh, it is uh, very rich in fisheries as well so food security as well as uh, medicines and other things that you can make from fish then the mineral deposits are quite uh, good over here and it is also uh, rich with hydrocarbon that means uh, fuel and fossil fuel and things like that so these are four key pillars uh, why th- means four important points um, that are in favor of this south china sea or why south china sea is so important and why china is trying to control this whole region now on your screen you can see some countries like uh, indonesia malaysia brunei and uh, philippines and other countries right so this country malaysia of course so this 
uh, countries and then you have some other countries here uh, vietnam is here right uh, cambodia thailand uh, uh, laos then you have uh, myanmar here so these countries are part of this group called asean on surface uh, level you may think that asean is quite close to china but in reality ASEAN nations, they have had enough uh, from China now and they are building good relationship with uh, USA, political relationship, uh, naval relationship, overall military relationship are quite deepening. Vietnam has added uh, six kilo class Russian origin submarines to its navy. If you go back in the history of USSR and Vietnam, then as well you will find that they had good defense cooperation relationship. And uh, same thing has been carried forward with Russia and uh, today's Russia and uh, Vietnam. They have good military relationship. France has provided formidable class uh, steel ships to Singapore. Uh, Germany has supplied petrol boats to Brunei Darussalam. And the Netherlands has given corvettes uh, to Indonesia. Japan is uh, partially funding Indonesian uh, coastal guard upgradation. India is uh, uh, discussing sales of BrahMos missile to Indonesia and Philippines. Uh, Thailand and Vietnam are also interested in purchasing uh, BrahMos missile from. India, I have a question for you. Can you give me the name of the country with the help of which India has developed uh, BrahMos missile? This is question number one for you. And BrahMos name uh, comes from uh, or is a short form or a sort of, uh, you know, uh, what is the right word? It's It's been um, created from which two rivers. Give me the name of those two rivers as well. So these are your two questions. Uh, stick your answer in the comment section. So overall, I can safely say that uh, China's isolation is growing in this region, isn't it? All these nations, uh, you can see Japan, USA, Russia, there are so many countries, right? Uh, these countries are together uh, doing something and something that is uh, isolating uh, China over here. Then I want you guys to remember this name, uh, Nantua Islands, uh, right? Uh, this belongs to Indonesia. China created some uh, troubles in this uh, Nantua Islands. And for this reason, it was in news. Uh, then Philippines and West Philippine Sea. Uh, here in West Philippine Sea, you will find this uh, Pag Asa Island, which is very important. So Philippines uh, has uh, uh, constructed a beaching ramp. Um, here in this uh, Pag Asa Island. Now, uh, what is the job of uh, this beaching ramp? Basically, you can uh, dock your ships here and uh, uh, Filipino Sea 130. Uh, this is a fighter jet uh, that landed on its uh, runway as well. So, Philippines is uh, uh, what do we say? Uh, it's proliferating, or uh, the right word would be it's increasing its capacity in West uh, Philippine Sea to counter to an extent. Uh, these troubles that are created by uh, China. And recently, uh, Philippines has uh, signed this uh, agreement with USA. It is called Visiting Forces Agreement uh, that will uh, uh, provide uh, USA's or USA's uh, navies and their defense forces will be able to access uh, this region for next uh, six months. So this is how uh, things are going. Uh, so far, uh, we have gone through so many important things. And uh, as I told you, that uh, the South China Sea is very important for India as well, Indo-Pacific point of view and trade point of view. Most of our merchandise, that is goods, are, uh, are passing from this region, uh, this South China Sea. So what India should do now is India must uh, increase and India must pursue its uh, defense diplomacy with various different countries of Indo-Pacific region, uh, increasing military training, uh, conducting military exercises with all these countries. If uh, there is any sort of natural disaster or anything like that, then uh, extending humanitarian assistance, uh, disaster relief activities, uh, um, you know, increasing uh, patrolling at uh, Malacca Strait. Uh, I think I have explained uh, you this Malacca. This is where you find this Strait of Malacca, which is very important for entry and exit into South China Sea. Uh, from Indian Ocean, of course. So these are the things that we need to do. At the same time, uh, we have so many important uh, comprehensive uh, strategic partners like uh, Australia, Japan, USA, Indonesia, Vietnam, and we can add some more like Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, and Singapore. And of course, we need to 
increase our military capacity at uh, our very important uh, tri service andaman and nicobar uh, theater right so which is not far from here it is not uh, displayed in this map but it is not far from uh, this portion here right so these are the things that india should do there are few more things uh, that india can do if we uh, take uh, tibet uh, a bit uh, seriously the reason why we are discussing tibet or it is in news again is because uh, uh, 6th july 2020 marked 85th birthday of uh, his holiness uh, dalai lama the one that you can see on your screen i'm sure many of you are aware about uh, a brief history of uh, india and uh, tibet and uh, tibet and china on your screen you can see this uh, country called uh, tibet uh, right uh, it used to have this uh, four a uh, big pardon three important uh, provinces uh, but uh, Uh, it's been what uh, more than uh, it's been nearly 70 years uh, it was back in 1950 when china took over uh, or snatched uh, this whole country of uh, tibet uh, and uh, at present china it means only this portion here this uh, this portion here is uh, it's named by china as uh, tar that is uh, tibet the autonomous region other portions are converted into uh, provinces or states by china now tibet is a country i want you guys to do a little bit of map work here uh, you will find that uh, this country shares its border with china india nepal myanmar and bhutan and i'm not sure how many of you are aware about this fact but uh, it's very interesting to know that if Uh, means tibet uh, there was a time when tibet was an independent country but if you look at the size of tibet the one that you can see on your screen in terms of uh, geographical area this is the 10th largest nation of the world 10th largest so you can imagine china has grabbed a very big portion of land so from last uh, 61 years uh, from 1959 till now Dalai Lama is living in our country as a treasured guest and uh, if you ask me then I would say it's a blessing that we have uh, his holiness Dalai Lama living in our country uh, from if you look at it from tangible point of view like uh, uh, religious tourism you know it very well that uh, Lord Buddha um, his birth means Gautama Buddha was uh, born here in our country and uh, as you know the brief history of buddhism isn't it so i'm not going into all those things but uh, very briefly in a nutshell every year uh, there are lakhs of people they visit india uh, they visit various different places that are associated with the life of buddha so this is a tangible thing right quantitative thing like uh, we make money or it increases our economy and soft power point of view right uh, intangible ways uh, peace uh, means dalai lama is uh, you know a representative dalai lama is uh, a sort of a symbol or icon of gandhian tradition as well of non violence and uh, this is the reason china has exploited uh, this non violence uh, or this tradition of non violence and china's territorial aggression is one of the main reason why uh, tibetan people are suffering from last 70 years isn't it he's also a religious as well as a spiritual icon he's also a living reflection of buddhist heritage of india as well as other buddhist nations so far india has not been that aggressive there was a time back in history where i think if i'm not wrong uh, it was sardar vallabhbhai patel who said that we should deploy indian army around this border here if i'm if i'm not wrong then it was sardar patel who said that we need to protect tibet uh, so that tibet remains independent but uh, uh, anyway eventually uh, india uh, was india did not uh, do that thing and uh, china took over in 1950 this whole region of tibet so okay anyway not going too much into history uh, so far we have been very soft with china as far as tibet is concerned but if we look at the behavior of china china knows this thing very well that uh, this whole portion belongs to india but then as well it has created this it has created this china pakistan economic corridor without even thinking about india's 
situation or India's core interest. So if China is not, uh, uh, you know, thinking about India, if it is not uh, paying any attention to India's uh, uh, core interest, then why we should think about uh, China? So we should definitely use this debit card. And one thing that I would like to clarify here is that we are we are not for means of course Tibet car is a very pressure very big pressure point for China but we don't want to use it for just political purpose right Tibet Dalai Lama as well as Tibet is is uh, you know is important for us uh, in terms of freedom and peace you know it is central for freedom and peace we have been under colonial power for nearly what 300 years so now if we see any other country who has been taken over by a so-called powerful country, then it is our duty, it is our ethical duty to take a stand for that nation. So this is, this, you know, I would say 90% is freedom and peace and 10% uh, we can, of course, play this geopolitical card. There are a few things that we need to do. We can uh, bestow uh, or we can honor the Dalai Lama with uh, uh, Bharat Ratna. We can talk about uh, Tibetan rights at international platforms. Uh, India needs to create uh, a good, deep uh, links uh, with a new generation of uh, Tibetan activists. Uh, we can rebuild links with all Tibetan sects. Uh, there are sects over there, so we need to develop relationship with all Tibetan sects. And, uh, you know, uh, we should declare Dalai Lama means uh, Dalai Lama is a post. It's, it's not name of a person right it is a post so uh, there is going to be someone who will succeed uh, the current uh, i think he is the 14th dalai lama so there will be someone who will uh, succeed uh, this 14th dalai lama so we need to respect the wishes of dalai lama on his succession and uh, we have to reject uh, this uh, so called uh, china strict to install a puppet dalai lama so these are the things that we can do okay Moving on to next item, dear friends. Uh, this one is about uh, Ethiopia's uh, politics. I don't want you guys to pay that much attention to Ethiopia's politics. It's not that important for you. Overall, on your screen, you can see that uh, Ethiopia is a country of uh, African continent. Uh, you can see so many countries are sharing its border or it is surrounded by so many countries. I want you guys to download the PDF and go through it. Just keep this thing in mind that Ethiopia is a landlocked nation. Now, the reason why it is in news is because a very famous uh, political singer, Hakalu Hundesa, was uh, murdered in Ethiopia. And uh, then this resulted into a big protest and 80 protesters were also killed. So this in Ethiopia, how it works is uh, you have various different ethnic communities over there. So this uh, singer, he used to come from this uh, Oromo community, ethnic community. Uh, one of the largest, but uh, they are highly marginalized. Uh, they are uh, big in numbers, but uh, they are not that politically strong. It's quite interesting to note that in Ethiopia, you have uh, uh, Tigrayans, uh, again, ethnic community, and uh, they constitute just uh, their total strength is just 6% of overall population of Ethiopia, but then as well, they are politically very, very powerful. They are very influential over there. And then you have one more community called Amharas. Amharas are at present uh, working with, they have the differences with uh, Oromos, but at present they are uh, Oromo, but they are working with Oromo to, uh, to fight against this uh, Tigrayans. So the reason why I'm uh, educating you guys on this ethnic community of uh, Ethiopia is because in the past, if you go through some prelims papers, right, of uh, particularly UPSC prelims paper, then you find that uh, they ask you questions on those communities or ethnic communities uh, who have been in news in last one year, right? So I still remember there was a question. I can't remember the exact year, but if you go through the past papers, then you will find it. There was a question about New Zealand and, you know, match the following type of questions. So like uh, Kurds, Kurdist, uh, Kurd people, they are from uh, Iraq, right? Predominantly Iraq. They You find them in various different parts of the world as well. Uh, but uh, then you have to see the country that you have an option. So uh, Maori, so they are from uh, New Zealand. So in the same way, if they ask you in the upcoming prelims, uh, Oromo, then they are from Ethiopia. Uh, uh, 
Tigrayans, uh, they are from Ethiopia. Amharas, they are from Ethiopia. Because this is a big global news. Uh, you cannot miss this thing. Okay. Moving on to next item. This is about a standoff. We have talked about a standoff. Uh, we have look at, looked at uh, this standoff thing from various different angles. Now, a matter of concern for India and for the world is that China is proliferating. China is modernizing its nuclear arsenal or nuclear weaponries. It is arming its uh, missiles uh, with uh, multi -independently, multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles uh, which can counter American missiles. Uh, China's uh, DF-31As, uh, which are road uh, mobile intercontinental ballistic missiles, are equipped with uh, MIRVs, that is this one, and potent penetration aids. On your screen, you can see this map of China. And uh, here is a region called uh, uh, Lop. Nur. Lopnur is a place where they have done so many uh, weapon testing and back in 2019 if you see all the nuclear weapon states then China did most number of ballistic missile tests in 2019. On one side we find the US and Russia they are trying to decrease their nuclear weapons and China is proliferating it. If you go through this CIPRI report China used to have 290 uh, warheads back in 2019 in 2020 they have 320 warheads uh, we have 150 pakistan they have 160 they are a bit ahead of us and as far as sophistication is concerned then uh, china is having a quite sophisticated nuclear arsenal there is a place called uh, korla in uh, uh, it's not korla of mumbai it's this korla of uh, xinjiang uh, province uh, where they have this uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles uh, they have this capacity of uh, 4000 kilometers they can strike any part of our country so what is the message that we can decode from this moves by china basically china is trying to proliferate and uh, once it will have uh, like global times of uh, which is a mouthpiece of chinese government uh, there's a media group called global times so global times is motivating or is saying that uh, china should have some 1000 warhead nuclear warhead in its arsenal so china is trying to increase or proliferate its uh, nuclear weapons and uh, it will definitely use it uh, to throw around its weight moving on to last uh, article of the day it's about kuwait it's about india now kuwait is uh, looking to reduce uh, the share of expatriates uh, in its workforce it is trying to reduce this immigrants uh, from its workforce and this is a big red flag or warning for our country there is a bill in national assembly of kuwait and uh, this bill is proposing this thing that uh, let's say if you have 100 expatriates if you have 100 immigrants from various different countries right then indian immigrants indian citizens uh, should not be more than 50 uh, 15 percent of uh, its uh, total population so if this bill will become a reality then eight lakh indians will have to leave kuwait kuwait is on your screen right uh, you can see iraq here saudi arabia here and uh, if you see this region then you have this gulf of oman then you have uh, this strait of uh, hormus and then you enter into persian gulf water so you here you have a tiny oil rich nation called kuwait if you go back in history then you'll find that uh, when oil was discovered in this region in 1960s and 70s all of a the sudden, these countries, they started getting huge amount of wealth. So they started building their cities and so many other things. So they required people because this region is not one of the most populated region in the world, right? Uh, so people from South Asia, particularly from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, etc. And not just these countries, you find people from uh, 100 plus countries uh, of the world, they live in this region, but uh, maximum uh, people or lion's share of this uh, immigrate uh, this immigrant community or expatriates are indians the problem with uh, this nations is that they their population or their human capital is not that skilled you know they they are not that skilled so they need people from various different parts of the world they need people from india but at present things are very tough as far as economy is concerned Right, oil price is, uh, you know, is nose diving, and uh, they are making huge amount of losses. So their economies, their sultanates, are not having that much money. They are making huge amount of 
losses. Then they have wars and other things going on. So security, they spend a huge amount of money on security and other things. So this will impact our country because we get huge amount of remittance, nearly 50% plus remittance. Overall remittance, 50% remittance comes from this region of Gulf. Uh, there are so many uh, pockets in our country, like right? Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, uh, you have... Uh, Gujarati people living in, in various different parts of Gulf nations. Uh, so, they will come back here. So, this will create more unemployment. It will create competition, uh, you know, with uh, this uh, labors, uh, right? Where there means too many people, few jobs. It's going to be very challenging for our country. Uh, states like uh, Kerala, they have launched uh, this uh, Dream Kerala project to support the returning workers uh, so that they can come here and... Uh, uh, so far, uh, during this COVID-19 episode, we have seen 1.5 lakh Indians. They have come, they have returned from uh, this uh, Gulf nations, right? So things are means a decision in one country can have a huge impact on our country, right? So this is going to be a bit tough. Now let's see how it uh, turns out. Moving on to news items, uh, dear friends, uh, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has said that the construction of strategic roads, bridges and tunnels in the border area will uh, be uh, expedited. It will go on and uh, he has uh, praised BRO. Uh, India and USA have uh, reaffirmed that uh, they are going to work together and make sure that Indo-Pacific Indo region remains free, open, inclusive, peaceful and prosperous. Indian Air Force is uh, quite strong and we have this advantage of experience. We can... Uh, uh, defend our country as well as uh, if uh, need arises the then we can have we can conduct a very brutal uh, attack as well uh, there is a person a u.s uh, from usa strategist as well as a military historian edward dr edward uh, uh, lutwak and he has said that uh, uh, because of china's behavior it has lost so many friends and uh, now china is just having one friend that is pakistan um, in comparison india uh, India has allies like uh, USA, uh, Japan, Israel, etc. Uh, co as far as COVID-19 is concerned, uh, the latest World Health Organization's uh, situation report indicates that uh, India's uh, cases per million population is around 505, while global average is 1,453. Uh, Infosys chairman has said that there are many co uh, companies that are going to leave China and uh, India can make uh, most out of it. Uh, Union Agriculture Minister has said that uh, so far from 11th April till now, 2.75 lakh hectare is cleaned. And uh, apart from Rajasthan, Rajasthan has reported minor crop losses because of this locust attack. Uh, Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, Haryana, uh, they are nearly protected. And World Bank will provide $400 million to enhance support for rejuvenating the Ganga. And that's everything in today's discussion. Thank you very much for watching this video. Stick your answer in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll see you soon. God bless you all. Jai